Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to episode 31 of Ono Anime, the podcast. My name is Mark. I'm Patrick. Uh, we are back after a little bit of a break. We had kind of a crazy July, beginning of August. Uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of conventions. We hit we hit yeah. three in four weeks, and one of those was in LA. Yeah, so we're kind of uh, we're kind of um, burnt out on burnt anime. Out. This is our last episode ever. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yeah. we're retiring after this. Yep. Um, yeah, so we we wanted to do uh, a new episode for you guys. Um, this is going to be pretty much solely dedicated to news because mm-hmm. uh, we have not talked about news in like the past month. It's and a lot of time. news has happened. Uh, we won't be able to cover everything, but these are some of the biggest stories. Um, and uh, what else? <laughs> that's I mean, it. Okay, yeah, we're just going to talk about a lot of news. We're, we're going to try to do this kind of loose, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can tell we're on the couch. Yeah. We're on the loose couch. Yeah, we're we're, we're couch. in chill out mode. With um, friends. Yeah. With our... With our children um <laughs> so beautiful children uh yeah we we just um we kind of really didn't feel like setting up all the audio equipment so it's not one we're of doing days. another chill episode like the last one so I like these, um, yeah we'll be back to we'll be back to doing a lot more back stuff to form. recently but let's talk about some news um first up just a great opening story I here. like this. this is a good story um faku the fine purveyors of uh Aero manga or as we in the West probably know it better as hentai. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're the guys. They have licensed um, two works. The first one is a more traditional um, Aramaga, I guess. Um, well, actually, I don't really know if I should say that, but it's definitely Both these more are pretty contentious. Yeah, it's it's more it's more in their wheelhouse than the second one, which we'll get to in a second. Um, the First one is from Shintaro Kago, which Crunchyroll describes as a modern leader of Eroguro Nonsensu, uh, which is a grotesque yeah. art style. Um, he was apparently profiled in Vice and Secret Comics Japan Underground Comics Now. I don't know what that second one is, hmm. but it's not surprising that Vice talked about yeah. him. Um, he's also a master of fashionable paranoia. No fucking sure. clue what that is. Something tells me he made that up. Um, but they're releasing an English collection of his 2015 work, Koi no Chojikuho. Um, so look forward to that. But really the reason <laughs> I put this on here is because... The second one is They is have something. also licensed a work from a very little-known artist named Yamamoto Arisa, um, who was actually a former assistant to Hajime Isayama, who is the mangaka behind, of course, Attack on Titan. Um, and her work is called Aiko no Machan. Now, this work is very unique in the sense that it's not really hentai so much as it is kind of a incredibly progressive, um, almost kind of subversive uh, educational tool, yeah. I guess, for uh, young girls um, it, discovering their womanhood their first, for the first time, It's I guess? their first non-adult manga in that it's not... Um it's not. It's not R eighteen. That's about the only. It definitely example. features like adult things, but mm-hmm. spo- But featured in a very interesting and kind of. Let me just read weirdly let educational. Me, let me thing. let me read the the first sentence of the description here. Aiko no Machan tells a story of Aiko, a girl who shortly after getting her first period discovers she has the ability to talk to her vagina, Machan. Yeah. So it's going to be. I mean, you know, there's no shortage of uh, weird children sex talk books out there in the u.s uh and this definitely seems to fall into that wheelhouse um but it's really interesting that faku are the ones that are licensing it i don't really know what they stand to gain from licensing it other than maybe knowing jacob he probably just wanted to do it to cause a stir yeah i mean it certainly has caused a lot of conversation from what i've seen um I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, debate to be had about whether or not a porn website licensing an educational tool for children is probably the best place where that should be going. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I'm, I think Faku probably the only people uh, to that be would. <laughs> that that would have brought it to the West. Um, and also, I think Faku really is um, trying to make a push for more as they call it, non-H or, uh, yeah. you know, non-adult mm-hmm. material. I mean, like, no, every I'm... website or every uh, magazine that they license from features at least one um, 
non hentai yeah. story a release and they put it in. So it's always in the back the of the physical magazine. Yeah, <laughs> but it's always featured. You know, it's always yeah, featured just the on the front page of the website, yeah. just the same as re- everything else. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, I, I personally, would, I'm I'm of the mind that the more things that get licensed and released in the U.S., no matter what they are, the better. So yeah. good on them for that. But it's definitely a weird thing to kind of foray into yeah. into non H content with yeah. because it, this is I getting an actual physical release as well. Yeah, this it's is getting like a proper Faku Books release. Yeah, it's it's it's. I, I just don't know why they're doing it. Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I can't really come up with any good reason other than what you said to Jacob, like, was interested by it. Um, yeah. And also, it was, uh, it proved to be somewhat controversial in Japan, which uh, also, I think, probably is a good reason for Faku to license it, because they're all about the controversial, let's just say that. But, um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was never published in Japan, because once it was found out that the artist was a... Uh, assistant a former assistant to uh, Hajime Isayama there was kind of a huge public outcry and also it is uh it talks about a lot of stuff that um they're just uncomfortable topics yeah members of a more polite Japanese society might rather not have discussed it's kind of analogous to the woman who took a uh, a 3d scan of her vagina yeah and... we all know about that thanks yeah. daily show <laughs> But, but um, no, it, it's the same deal. Some some things Japanese society probably just doesn't want to deal with. And yeah. This definitely falls firmly into that category. So it's interesting that uh, it's coming here. It, I think it is a an interesting educational tool for us Westerners to see like how that sort of uh, topic not, is approached. It is not the, the first time that something like that has happened, though. There was a true bra as well. I don't remember if that ever got uh, if the anime ever got licensed, but that's a, that was a similar thing about a girl getting to the point getting to the age where she needed to find a bra and it was about feeling comfortable with your body and stuff like that i do know that uh that eventually got a uh, a disc release in the u.s but i'm not sure if that was ever simulcasted here yeah um moving on uh toho animation uh announced uh a while ago now on uh july 18th um that they would be producing a new three feature film series of Cyborg 009 CGI films called Cyborg 009 Call of Justice. Um, And they're all going to be receiving two-week theatrical runs in Japan uh, later this year in November and December. Uh, The most notable fact about these movies is that they are directed by Kenji Kamiyama of Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex and also the previous CGI Cyborg 009 movie, uh, 009 Re-Cyborg. Um, this features some uh, some new designs. There's a trailer. Actually, up- my next question was going to be, if it, is, is it going to be pretty much the same stuff as Re-Cyborg? Uh, no. Same stuff. From what I can tell, in my expert opinion on Cyborg 009, <laughs> no. Um, I will imagine that it has a similar feel, but, um, yeah, these designs definitely look a lot more anime than, <laughs> uh, than Re-Cyborg did. Re-Cyborg yeah, definitely took a, uh, realistic approach, but, um, some, some characters definitely look to be changed a lot more than others. Obviously, like, Jet is not going to have a huge pointy nose and super long hair. Francoise looks a lot more like Moe, um... You know, zero zero four doesn't look like a seventy year old man anymore. So, uh, definitely a, 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 a less a, a, a realistic approach. But um, there's actually a PV out. Um, it's kind of a short teaser trailer. It definitely looks to be kind of a marriage between the like you know style of Re Cyborg and the original anime, which was obviously very stylized uh, by today's standards. Um, but yeah, it should be interesting. Um, Kodai Kakimoto um, was uh, he's he was the uh, the unit director for the uh, Psychopaths movie. Uh, he's also worked on um, Arpeggio of Blue Steel, hmm. um, and he is uh, actually uh, going to be the unit director for the first film. Oh, that's pretty. So uh, Kamiyama is kind of you know directing and, and advising, and then he's going to be uh, more involved, I would assume. Um, and they actually, uh, again, you know, most of the staff, honestly, um, from Ray Cyborg has basically come over to these new, uh, films because Kakimoto also collaborated with Kamiyama on the original Ray Cyborg film. Um, and I think the most interesting thing about this entire thing, and I kind of buried the lead on it, is, um, Signal MD, 
which is actually under the production IG umbrella, is a mm-hmm. brand new digital digital only studio that IG started like last year. Hmm. Um, they've only animated like one or say, two things. What have things. they done? Because I don't know that name. Yeah, <laughs> they're very, very, very new. Um, they did something on, called Tante Team KZ G Ken Note. Um, oh, but the, I know that name. Yeah, <laughs> and also they did um, a series of shorts called Colorful Ninja Iramaki, which okay, a lot of people might be more. familiar with because those are pretty uh, popular on uh, YouTube. But um, and they're also working on a couple different feature projects, uh, some of which they announced at Anime Expo, which is the first time I heard of Signal MD. Um, but that's probably the um, the biggest deal with this is because uh, Signal MD is a very very new studio. Uh, they are under the IG banner, so obviously they will have all of their money and talent backing them up. So that's not really something to be worried about. Um, but this is going to be part of a kind of new like digital only push for uh, IG. Uh, who has been doing a lot of really interesting kind of yeah, uh, genre-bending things recently. The, the CG film era. Yeah, area and then uh, uh, Masatsugu Saito, who designed the characters for Captain Earth and Expelled from Paradise, is uh, doing the character designs. That's good. So yeah, That's they've a got a good I team like of people those. working on these. Um, I'm really excited to see it. It's celebrating the 50th anniversary of Cyborg That's 009, which crazy. is insane to think about that anything is that old in this industry, but Cyborg 009 is about the oldest thing. Just think about anniversaries makes me really sad that Metroid 30th anniversary came and went with yep. nary a peep out of Nintendo, except for a DMCA takedown notice from a fan project. That's cool. Thanks, Nintendo. Yeah, thanks, Nintendo, on that F-Zero win. Uh, <laughs> If Metroid can't get a new one. Yeah. Um, a couple notes on the story. Um, obviously, it will be depicting Joshi Mamora and the other cyborg struggle with uh, the Brasudo, which are a group of people who possess superhuman powers and intellect and have manipulated human history since ancient times. So some Illuminati huh. stuff. Uh, their goals are unknown, and they cast a dark shadow over the world. Though few people believe in Brasudo's ex- existence, one journalist named Lucy Davenport heads to Texas <laughs> to contact a certain pa- family, and she meets the cyborgs. The cyborgs themselves have been freed from their duty of protecting humanity ever since the establishment of the UN Guardian troops, and they now live quiet lives at peace. Now, the UN Guardian troops were actually in Cyborg 009 yeah. re cyborg. They were the like cool, like skull faced robot things that they were fighting against. If this against. is uh, continuous from re cyborg, or if. I wouldn't be surprised if they were taking the Ghost in the Shell approach and just kind just of kinda taking the universe, universe and just doing yeah. what the, whatever the fuck. Uh, however, Lucy's visit and the return of the Brasudo draw Joe and the others once more onto the breach of a new battle. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. It yeah. seems to be an interesting project. I'm really intrigued to see what Signal MD does. You said does. there's three films. Do you know if they're all feature length or if they're like 45-minute films? I don't think it says. Um, I take it they're not all coming out at the same time? Some they are else. not. It's okay. uh, First one is November 25th. Second one is December 2nd. Third is December 9th. I would expect with that sort of release schedule, they are not full feature length films. No. Japan likes um, to do stuff They're like probably going to be 45 to an hour, I would guess. Huh. Uh, Interesting. They did the same sort of thing with Ghost in the Shell Arise, and those were like 45 minute long yeah. movies. So, yeah, I'm excited to see this. Uh, I'm even more excited to see who might license these for home video release in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, whenever the fuck that happens. Um, yeah, so let's. Who got, who got Recyborg in the U.S.? That is Funimation, I believe. Okay. They have it on their website, uh, streaming in English and Japanese. No shit. Uh, right. If you haven't seen it, I would suggest go watching it because it is it's pretty good. Uh, you will not understand the story, but that's all right because it's not about the story, story, is it? <laughs> it's about our cyborgs. Uh, I want to briefly mention this because uh, they they did um, announce this quite a while ago. However, completely slipped by me. Uh, Gravity Rush Two is a thing that is happening soon. Uh, mm-hmm. It is coming to uh, the U.S. on December second. Uh, for those that don't know, Gravity Rush was originally a Vita game. Uh, it was ported to PS4 last year, uh, and I am a huge fan. I think it's the best Vita game, period, uh, other than Persona 4, but that kind of is an unfair thing because it's not really a Vita game. But, um, yeah, it um, it was really good. Now, the thing that gets me most excited is that along with this announcement of the release date, they also announced a very long time ago that Kara, the studio behind, you know, Evangelion, uh, is actually doing a Gravity Rush animation project. It's yes. called Gravity Rush The Animation Overture. It bridges the gaps between the original Gravity Rush and the sequel. Um, and that's all we know. 
<laughs> Kari's putting their hands in, uh, in a lot of pots lately. Are they not the ones that are doing the other thing that I'm sure is in your news? Yes, we'll talk about that later. But uh, Kara is doing. Um, they're, they're doing. They're getting around. They're doing some things that are not Evangelion, which uh, we'll good. talk about later because I'm actually kind of all right with that at this point. I've made my peace with the <laughs> fact that Evangelion 4.0 is. It'll still come out very, when it's ready. Yeah, exactly. Um, yes. Yeah, so. Uh, the sequel is going to announce a new character. Uh, it looks really good. They have this really weird thing where uh, there are three different styles of combat now, which is a complete uh, different thing than the first game had, which is very simple, you know, sort of air and ground combat. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's basically all we know. Um, I'm assuming that... Uh, it is going to be released with the game, although I cannot find it anywhere. It might be released like two weeks early as a uh, promotional material. Something else revealed that the previously announced special anime is a prequel. Duh, duh, duh. Let me go to this article on Anime News Network and see what I can find out. We're really right, well, we're really yeah. prepared here. Yeah. Uh, while you're doing that, I want to talk real quick about the uh, <clears throat> probably the most ironic news story I've ever heard. Uh, everybody's favorite... Uh, Break your heart, writer requires a heart transplant oh, no. of oh no for himself. So Jun Maeda oh, has Jun Maeda. Uh, Jun Maeda is the writer of many uh, key visual novels, uh, Clan Ad being the biggest one. Uh, he also did Angel Beats, Charlotte from a few seasons ago. Uh, I can't remember if he did Aaron Cannon or not, but uh, he's he's that guy, the the guy that loves to make you cry. And uh, ironically enough, even though uh, heart transplants were a main feature in the end of uh, Angel Beats. He requires one himself. Now, he, he said that, you know, the, the way the, the Japanese, I guess, heart transplant list works, it's not it's not like he's going to die. So he, He's fine. He's been tweeting about playing Muramasa from his hospital bed. And uh, he said, don't worry, I'm still writing too. Stuff is still going to happen. But uh, I need a heart transplant. So if you got one for me, let me know. Damn. That's that's weird. And it's it does real, make me sad. It makes me real bummed. I still kind of have to laugh a little yeah, because I mean, of it's, all people. It's a little of poetic. All people. He got, um, he got anime plot sickness himself. That's so, that's so shitty. I feel so bad for laughing at that, but oh it, my god. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, as far as Gravity Rush anime goes, uh, there is no announced release date. But it is, quote, expected before the Yeah, I figured it release. would be released as promotion material. Don't know what that, in, I don't know what that entails. I don't know what it is, but we're going to find out, uh, hopefully. <laughs> Knowing Kara, though, I don't know when. Uh, they're not very good with release they dates. They're good at a lot of things. Release dates is not one of them. Yeah. Um, okay, really briefly, I would like to talk about how... Uh, I, I would like to use this article as a convenient means for discussing the fact that Long Riders, the yes. girls cycling anime... Is October, right? Is happening in October. Yes. They just, renou- they just announced that Ray is going to be singing Ooh. the uh, anime's theme song. Ray is good. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, she's really good. She's done a lot of really good that stuff. That Nagiyasu opening, A Little in the Sea, is like one of Mobra's yeah. favorite songs. And one of mine as well. Um, and I, yeah, I just wanted to kind of uh, express, again, my excitement uh, for this anime that is about uh, this is, this long is another, distance yeah. cycling. Uh, in college, even. Yeah. It's not even a high school show. Following a uh, new trend, which I really like, which is about people in not college. in high yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> Which is we could always awesome. use more of that. Uh, uh, two shows this season. Uh, I mean, one of them doesn't exactly involve college, but New Game is definitely not yeah. a high school anime. It's a workplace, yeah. Um, it's a post high school anime, and then uh, Cheer Donchi or Cheer Boys yeah. takes place in in college. Yeah. Uh, so those are always use more of that. Yeah, I, I I like it. It's definitely a very different setting than than a high school anime. And no, Long Riders, the manga takes a while to get into competition. Like I think like three or four volumes. So I wonder I wonder how they're going to take it. I don't know if they're going to take the more slice of life feel that it has in the first few chapters. As she kind of like learns what uh, what distance cycling is and all that. Or yeah. Not. But the, Long Riders is uh, is interesting because it came from a cycling magazine first. It wasn't even published. In and a, I remember you getting that. Yes, actual yes, magazine. I have. I have the OG one, but it's really cool because um, it started. They had like uh, they had good uh, good like tour maps of the best like bicycle rides you could take between like like five hundred kilometers or a hundred kilometers. You know, the the characters would be just posted along it as as a guide, and then it eventually turned into a manga and uh, I want to say comic Rex. Cool um, stuff. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, usually with these kind of shows, uh, the staff doesn't really matter. 
<laughs> <laughs> and I would say that probably holds true, but um, I actually the cast am a, sure does. I am a, yeah. I am a little excited because so Studio Actus is handling mm-hmm. the animation. They did Girls and Ponzer. Um, yeah, Actus has not done a lot, but what they have yeah, done is I this like also it. visually looks to be a show that they could probably handle. Um, Tatsuya Yoshihara, who directed Monster Musume and Yatterman Knight, uh, is <laughs> handling yeah. the direction. That's pretty exciting. Natsuko Takahashi, who wrote um, Ore Monogatari, or My Love Story, uh, and also Tokyo Magnitude 8.0, is handling wow. serious composition. Yeah. And then they've given uh, um, they've given character design to a newcomer by the name of Giemon Futsuzawa, who was a uh, animation director for the second season of Psychopaths, which okay. is, was not great, <laughs> but I'm sure he'll do fine with character design. Um, so yeah, that that uh, that staff excites me a little bit. There's uh, some good names on that list with some good uh, history. There's some interesting CG bikes coming. Yeah, from it'll be it'll really. Just, they're going to be. You know what? If nothing else, they are going to be very very accurate bicycles. Mm-hmm. It's funny because the girl's first bike is a folding bike. Yeah, it so. says this in the uh, in the um, the the, yeah, the, the girl's plot first synopsis. bike is definitely a folding bike. She buys it because she sees one on the train and thinks it's super too. cute. She eventually gets introduced to the world of long-distance cycling and road racer bikes, and she forms a cycling team called Fortuna with four other female yep. college students from the same school. Their goal is to ride in a brevet or long-distance event called <laughs> Fresh. <laughs> it's going to be that. good. Like, yeah, I, I love the manga. It's super endearing. All the key visuals look great. And I, I think I mentioned this on the, on the podcast last time we brought up Long Riders, and that one of the things I love the most is the, uh, the artist, the author getting more excited than anybody else for this to finally be yeah. a thing. She, like, constantly posts fan art of her own characters on Pixiv and on Twitter. Yeah. It's really endearing. I'm, it's, I'm excited. I, I'm really excited for a person like me whose only experience with cycling anime starts and stops with Yomushi Pedal. This should be a really fun change of pace. There's another one called, like, Overcharge. Yeah, or Overdrive. Overdrive. I Overdrive. Was, yeah, I've seen... I, Weirdly enough, I've seen an episode or two of that like way before I started watching anime regularly. So yeah. like on YouTube, but Weird. it's still not as good as Yoko no, in no, terms of like not. cycling sports anime. But um, anyway, let's move on. I'm I, well, we could talk about <laughs> long riders all day because yeah, I'm super excited could. for that. And literally, no one else is. Like I don't think a single other person that I know. That's why we have knows. a podcast. Our I opinions know. are better. Yeah, <laughs> they matter. Damn it. <laughs> Uh, I demand to be heard. Listen, we're two white men. Our opinions matter more than anyone else. <laughs> we're a minority in okay. Japan, damn it. Let's talk about that other thing that we were talking about with Kara. Um, oh. Kind of a, to, for me at least, a fucking huge, uh, the internet kind of blew huge, up huge bombshell announcement. Um, Kara is rebooting Mobile Police Pat Labor um, <laughs> as a 10 minute Still sounds weird to say out loud. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, definitely not a thing that I ever expected to happen. I mean, it's still, it's, it's a thing, it's a property that definitely still exists. Like, I think the last Pat Labor thing was the live action series in 2013. They had, like, a full-size, uh, labor that they, like, reeled out for that thing, a la the Gundam at, at Diver <laughs> yeah. City. Uh, and is I think they actually... Is that a prop used actually, in a live action movie? Yeah, it I is. I think that's what it is, They yeah. just built a full-size labor and then just, like, had it, uh, just, like, towed it around. Where it is now. They also had the truck that they drive it around yeah. on in the movie, and they just drove it somewhere and, like, parked it on the waterfront, I parked they, like, it at Diver City. I take it out like, for, like, parades or some yeah, shit. Yeah, it was dope. Like, they still have it somewhere. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, I just, be. like, I don't know where it is. But, um... Anyway, so it's gonna be an ex- animator expo short. Uh, it's going to be animated by Kara themselves, which means it's probably going to be the centerpiece of whatever they're producing for yeah. the next season of the Animator Expo shorts. Um, it is actually going to debut as an extra during the Animator Expo's one-week screening event beginning on October 15th, and then it's going to be released on home video, which is a pretty big deal, because I don't think... Has any Animator Expo um, short from Kara, at least, been I, released on home video? I could swear that they were putting together a Blu-ray box or something. I could be wrong. I'm sure licensing is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But um, I don't think so. The thing that makes me really happy is that Yasuhiro Yoshiura, who directed uh, Patema Inverted, is clearly making this his passion project because he's both the director 
and the director of photography, and he's also doing all to of be the fair, storyboards. This, this is a short, which very yeah. much lends itself better to one person's influence. That's very true. But this is also Studio Car, and Studio Car <laughs> has like 60 million people working for them at any given time. That's true. And then everyone else clambering to work for them because they're like the new Ghibli, basically. It was probably this guy's idea, and they said, yeah, yeah we'll do it. You yeah, just well, need to do it all yourself. Because it's fucking Pat Labor. Like, yeah. nothing, honestly, in terms of like 80s and early 90s anime, I don't think anything deserves a modern reboot because like, even from the trailer, the like it pacing. looks so if you, perfect. If you try to, or when I try to go back and watch the original, the pacing just feels very, very dated in the same way that yeah. Gundam does. Well, I mean, they're both of the films are directed by Mamoru Oshii, who is famous for his plotting pace. Yeah, and they're great if you know the context and also are very into like the kind of shit that I am when watching his movies, which is like very like technical mm-hmm. a- atmospheric stuff there i mean they're just emblematic of a type of thing that just is not made anymore yeah, um, yeah you're right uh, and we can argue did this guy did this guy sorry to take over did oh, this right. guy um did he work on the original at all no or he, he's just a fan no um he, uh kazunori ito however who worked on the screenplays for various earlier pat labor animes collaborating with yoshiura for the script uh, Naoyuki Asano, who is the character de- uh, character designer for Osamatsu-san, is adapting Masami Yuki's original character designs, which I'm really okay. excited about because they look really good. That's good. <laughs> they look very appropriate to what um, a, a modernized Pat Labor should be. Uh, and also, Kenji Kawai from the original of Pat course. Labor who movies else? is doing the music, of Kenji course. Motherfucking Kenji motherfucking Kawai. Kenji motherfucking Kawai, because Kenji Kawai will never stop working as long as he lives. Uh, and he's also the John Williams of anime. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then Car is doing the animation. Um, I'm really, I can't like tell you guys how giddy I am going to be for ten minutes this year. Like, it's probably going to be the giddiest I will be <laughs> the entire year for ten minutes of anything because this is um, by far one of my favorite um, properties just as a whole, uh, and something that I think is um, like really like disappointingly underrated like i feel like it gets it's nowhere just nobody, near as nobody credit. knows about it unless they've been an anime fan for some time they yeah just, the, the people who have been watching since like the mid 90s are all about pat labor but yeah other than that well i think the biggest reason that pat labor does not get enough love especially in the u.s because it's huge in japan still like yeah. the fact that they're able to make like multi-million dollar you yeah, know live, short action, films, live yeah. action films about it with these like grandiose sets speaks to its popularity and there was actually a third pat labor movie produced uh, in the mid 2000s at some point that uh, did pretty well but um i think the reason it's glossed over a lot in the states is because of uh, ghost in the shell ghost in the shell is uh, yeah. pretty much overshadows all of oshi's other work uh and i think also the reason why i love pat labor so much is it's so interesting as an oshi fan and as a, as a ghost in the shell fan to watch pat labor and see the dna of ghost in the shell happening yeah. Before Ghost in the Definitely Shell kind of ever the got off the ground, I mean, yeah, it was the the Pat Labor Two was the last feature film that he directed before he directed Ghost in the Shell, and it's painfully obvious to see why. Just waiting to break out. Yeah, well, and also that's why I love Pat Labor Two so much, is because it's essentially just Ghost in the Shell set in the Pat Labor universe. Yeah. Um, but I would say anyone that's listening to this hasn't checked out Pat Labor yet. Um, there's two different things. There's the first two TV series, and then there is an OVA series and the two movies. The OVA series and the two movies are all Oshi and Kenji Kwai. The TV series, never watched it, and I never will, because it's just it's See, completely having, different. Having seen, I, I never finished the TV series, but the thing is, with the OVA series, like you said, you, you like Oshi a lot, and that, that's kind of your deal, the way it works. Yeah. For me, I originally started with the OVA series, and I was like, this is interesting, but I don't I don't kind of understand what's going on. So going back and watching the TV series and kind of understanding the characters a bit, because there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, pieces that are already set in place when the OVA start. Yeah. The TV series is really good to put those set pieces in their places. So yeah. start with the OVAs and think, this is kind of weird. Like, it's interesting, but I'm not really getting it. Yeah. Go back and try the TV series for a bit. I think you'll, you'll find that handy. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't want to sit through a 50-something episode yeah. two season series go read the wiki <laughs> and honestly you could skip the ova series and just watch the two movies because the two movies i think are great standalone stories and do a really good job of introducing the main male character and noah who is the main the, the main yeah. character period uh and are really awesome because the first 
uh, Pat Labor movie follows the two um, labor pilots pretty exclusively, or like the two labor teams pretty exclusively. And then the second movie actually is a complete turnaround and focuses on the leadership of the later poli- labor police department. And the characters from the first movies are like a, sa- a side plot, which I think is really interesting because it gives you a really good exploration of some stuff that you just yeah, you don't see. And it's also it's a really cool like maturation of a you know. Of a of a bunch of characters and also uh, a, a, just a property as a whole. Uh, as far as the uh, third movie in the live action show, don't bother. <laughs> nope. The live action show is depressing as fuck. Uh, in yeah. the sense that none of the original characters appear. There's no labor it's really action a at all. Thing. I mean, it's, a different it's thing. yeah. It's it's a it is a character drama. It is not a uh, you know a technically minded mecha show. Um, but also, if you need, like, a good antithesis to, like, you know, what many people think of when they think of mecha anime, which is, like, super robot shows, this is the furthest possible thing from that. This is the, the most realistic take on a mecha you're ever going to get. Uh, and it's really, really interesting and definitely a really cool kind of, like, historical thing to check out. Uh, but all that aside... This is going to be fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited. So all that aside, you can ignore everything we said in the last, like, five, yeah. ten minutes. Just be ready for the 10-minute uh, OVA when I'm it drops. So, I'm so excited. Like, it's going to be really cool. And I really, 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 really hope that Kara does something more with this. Like, I want to see another Pat I, I have movie. a feeling they're kind of testing the waters. I here. would love to see, like, even, like, a two-part OVA or something. Like, some other hopefully, big hopefully thing. Hopefully it does well enough to, um, to warrant that. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just really, uh, I'm really fucking excited for this. This is something that I never thought was going to happen, and it really came out. How it is? Field. Yeah, it's a really strange thing to announce, but also like if you think about it, no one is better suited to do this than Carl. Absolutely not. They're, no. they're this is perfect for them. So, anyway, moving right along. Uh, guess what? Willem Dafoe is going to play Ryuk in the Death Note live action. I forgot movie about on this Netflix. already. Um, I had basically wholeheartedly dismissed this until right now when they announced that and now i'm back in <laughs> i have, really want to see real quick. it do you have the other big live action news in here uh oh are we talking about the tiger and bunny bullshit oh no what are we talking about sword art online oh no i thought that oh, was good. one thing yeah okay gonna, okay that was so one after this one we'll, we'll do that yeah okay okay so um willem dafoe is going to be playing ryuk uh the film is going to premiere on netflix exclusively in 2017, the rest of the cast, um, which now that I'm reading these fucking <laughs> names, kinda, I'm yeah. super bummed. Uh, uh, Nat Wolf <laughs> is playing Light Turner. Oh no! Yeah, I didn't hear that. Oh no, yeah, this is bad. Why not just leave it at Light? I don't fucking know. Keith Stanfield, who apparently was in Straight Outta Compton, is playing L. Cool. Margaret Qualley from The Leftovers is playing Mia Sutton. I did kind of like The Leftovers. Yeah. Paul Nakauchi from Star Wars The Clone Wars is playing Watery. And Shay Wiggum from Boardwalk Empire <laughs> is playing name. James Turner. I don't know who any of these fucking characters are. I know Light. Uh, I, but I know Light uh, Yagami. Watari not- is, uh, is Els Butler. James Turner is probably, uh, that's got to be a uh, Light's... Detective? Or, that, that's got to be Light's dad who works at the police oh, agency. Yeah, just right. since Light is Light Turner. Ugh. I'm sorry, did I say Light's butler? That's Elle's butler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Light, Light Turner. Yeah. That's upsetting. <sighs> Boy, that's what happens when you fucking whitewash a whole Japanese thing, guys. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. The Japanese um, live action Death Notes have been pretty fun. The, the newest TV series that only ended a few months ago was pretty damn good. The weird thing is, is that. Um, Roy Lee from Vertigo Entertainment. He's a comic book guy. Uh, Viz, Viz production is Jason Hoffs, uh, who was a producer on Edge of Tomorrow. And the actor Masi Oka, who is the guy that played the... What's his name in Heroes? Uh, oh, Hero. Y- yeah. Hero, yeah. yeah. They're, they're all producers. Okay. Well. Uh, Doug Davidson, who directed the American... Uh, or he was responsible for the American version of The Grudge. And Brian Witten, who okay. was responsible for American History X and Final Destination, our executive producer. Right, until we got to that name, honestly, that producer list kind of had me excited. I know Matsuoka, especially, is a giant JoJo's fan, and he fit JoJo into Heroes yeah. wherever he could. I. I. Uh, I'm interested, but I am not excited. Oh, yeah. 
and I'm not optimistic because, you know, I light Turner. I really don't like that <laughs> at yeah. all. Not even a little bit. Oh uh, God. Anyway, let's move on. Before yeah, let me uh, let me hit up. mine then. Yeah, while, while we're on live uh, live action. So uh, some of the bigger news over the last few weeks that uh, that we've missed is uh, American Independent Production Company Skydance Television has acquired the global rights to make a live action television show for Sword Art Online. I saw that so good, real quick. Boy, Skydance. Uh, I, for, I already forgot what Skydance has done. Do you know? If I've like never it? wished uh, something would not happen more. Yeah. Uh, so I, I heard Skydance yeah. got it, and I'm like, I kind of know that name. And then I heard live action, I was like, oh, God. And then I heard the name of the, uh, the person in charge, Miss Lyda Calogridis. I'm sure I didn't say that correctly, if you're listening, Listen, sorry. Listen, we only deal in Japanese names. Right, here. exactly. And, and even then, even we butcher then those. we're not great with those. <laughs> but um, so she, she is normally a script writer. She's, she's the showrunner for this. But uh, she has penned a script for uh, live action uh, Battle Angel Alita and Ghost in the Shell. Oh, boy. Neither of which exists yet. Oh, oh but, okay. Um, well, one one of them is soon to exist. Yeah. We'll see what, the, then, we'll uh, see what happens also, with that. Also Terminator Genesis. Oh, no. Mm. No. She no. has, like, one good credit to her name, which is this Shutter is... Island. Shutter Island okay. was all right. Yeah, Shutter, Shutter Island was pretty, pretty good. good. I like that movie. But, um, yeah, this could go so many ways, and none of them are up. Probably bad. <laughs> Most of them bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, Reki Kawahara says that he is going to work closely with them, which... Doesn't mean good or bad. He's he's made some bad decisions himself in his days of an yeah, author. Yeah, we need to talk about that one hentai chapter he wrote. Yeah, yeah, seventeen point five or seven point five. I don't fucking know that yeah, one. That the one. Glo- two and a half years. One. Two and a half years worth of glopping. Uh, that's really bad. Nothing will ever no. not make that funny. We would will we always would be funny. Fail as human beings if we ever let him forget that he did that. No. So as fans and as human beings. That's that's a thing that's happening. I mean, we can talk about it until we're blue in the face. Until it comes out, there's no way of telling. Obviously, seems yeah. like a real weird, dumb thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. I can, I can see why they want it to happen though. With uh, with the burgeoning VR field and everything, like, totally. that's becoming a big totally. deal. Totally. I just wh- and, why like, Sword Art Online? Probably it's it's a it's the right time like, to do I it. I feel like even like Dot Hack would probably make a better live action series than Sword Art Online. Depends on which part. Sword of Art Hack. Online is really <laughs> fucking anime. Yeah. And not in a good way. <laughs> like yeah. I don't get me wrong. No, I like Sora Online, anime. but it's super not tropey. gonna work. It's That's not gonna work. Action. It's gonna be bad. No, uh, I can't before, wait for. Before we move on from Sora Online, there is a second half of regular Sora Online news. Uh, for those of you who follow the light novels, you might have noticed that there hasn't been a new one in a while after the uh, Alicization arc oh, ended. Shit, I have this on my list. Oh, you have this. Good. All right, Let's well, get I'm getting it out of the way. Well, uh, Recky himself has come out and said, don't worry, the story's not over. I'll pick yep. it up early next year. So 2017, more like Getting novels. More. I have no idea where the official English releases are. Um, they should be... In terms of light novels, I don't think they're very far. I think they're probably... I think. It, I know they finished Gun Gale. Yeah. I think at best they're, they're on the starting stories. on Mother's Rosario or, yeah. or Caliber or something um, like that. I know they're doing well on Progressive. Which is if if you haven't read any of the light novels and you want to start with progressive, don't don't read the originals. Progressive is a hundred million times better. That's like the rewritten version. Yeah, of this the originals. is because Recky Recky wrote that as a web novel and it was fun and great as a web novel. And then he wrote Excel World, which is just overall a better written thing. And then he said, "Well, now Sword Art Online and Excel World are popular. Let me kind of fix Sword Art Online." And he just did a a very good job doing that. Progressive yeah. as a whole is just a much better written. If you want to talk about, literature. like, maturity, it's like the dude that did Planetes went on to do fucking Vinland Saga. Yeah. Like, it's so... It's a big difference. Different, yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about some happy stuff. Let's talk about Yuri on Ice. <laughs> yes. So they revealed the story, the key visuals, the character mm. designs, and the fact that it is premiering in October. So, yep. we, uh, so like... You know, summer was the sh- was the summer of like chill shows. Yeah. Well, get ready to get your fucking genitals exploded by the fact that fall is gonna have like six sports anime, and they're yeah. all gonna be hype as fuck. Can't believe this is a figure skating anime. I know. It's so and it, cool. I'm like literally, I'm about to read you the character descriptions, and I'm so I have not fucking read these ready yet, for that. So yeah. I'm excited. And they they revealed some of the cast. So Toshiyuki Toyonaga plays Yuri Katsuki, the main character, a 23 year old figure skater who is faint hearted and gains weight easily. Oh no. He is the figure skater with the world's biggest glass heart. His favorite dish is a 900 calorie breaded pork cutlet bowl. His greatest skating assets are his peculiar peculiar sense of rhythm and unique step. 
However, he is weak to pressure and messes up at crucial moments. He's at a crucial point in his career, and he bets everything on one last skating session. You know, I was Keyword's hoping... Keyword's 23-year-old. So yeah, he's so out of he's, college. Yeah. I was, I was kind of hoping with his name that he'd be, like, half Russian. D- just wait. Ah. Koki Uchiyama as Yuri Plisetsky, a oh. 15-year-old next-generation Russian figure skater who has won three consecutive junior world championships. Right, right, because right. of his looks, he's called the Russian Fairy. But as soon as he steps off the ice, he becomes vulgar and acts more like a delinquent. He's an oh, ambitious like person already. who believes without a doubt he will become the best in the world. And that is him. He's a very... He's the oh lady. God, he's the, the lady boy. The hoodie. Yeah. I like it. And then my boy. My favorite. Oh, no. The most beautiful man on earth. Of course earth. it's him. Junichi Suwabe plays Victor Nikiforov, a 27-year-old living legend who has garnered the attention of the world. He is a skater who has won five consecutive world championships He's popular with men and women of all ages, and he has a rock star like charisma. Yuri has been chasing after him since he was a child. Victor begins to take an interest in Yuri for a strange reason. Oh no! Gay reason. Might be yaoi on ice. I'm so fucking ready for this goddamn show. Are there any female characters? Uh, not yet. <laughs> aren't, aren't there some in the key visual? Though? Uh, no. One. Maybe. Maybe. That's one, maybe. It's hard to tell. Very androgynous lady. Alrighty. Uh, show story evolves, uh, revolves around Yuri Kotsky, who carried all of Japan's hopes on his shoulders to win at the Grand Prix Finale ice skating competition, but suffered a crushing defeat. He returns home to Kyushu and half feels like he wants to retire and half feels like he wants to continue ice skating. With those mixed feelings swirling inside him, he confides himself inside his parents' house. Suddenly, the five-time consecutive world champion ice skater Viktor Nikiforov appears before him, and along with him is Yuri Plisetsky, a young Russian figure skater who is already defeating his seniors. Victor and both Yuris take up the challenge on an unprecedented Grand Prix series. Uh, I am so fucking ready for this goddamn show. Yeah, that, that uh, sounds fucking great. Manga creator Mitsuro Kubo and director Sayo Yamamoto are credited with the original work. I forgot work. it was Sayo Yamamoto. Yeah, uh, this is all based on her Animator Expo short. Yeah, uh, I do remember that. Yeah. That was really good. Um, she is also directing and overseeing the scripts of the series, and Kubo is designing the original characters and drawing storyboards. Additionally, uh, Tadashi Hiramatsu from Parasite the Maxim is adapting the character designs for animation, and Kenji Miyamoto is credited with the figure skating choreography. Kenji Miyamoto is a former Japanese yep, Olympic I uh, know that name. figure skater. I remember what he looks like. Yep. Uh, and then a gentleman by the name of Taro Umebayashi uh, from fucking uh, y- y- Yoko Kano's p- uh, col- music collective Piano is doing the music, uh, along with Taku Matsushiba, who's also from Piano. Uh, and Keisuke Tominaga, the producer of Kids on the Slope and Terror and Resonance, yep. is the music producer. This is going to be, if nothing Mappa else... is animating it. Yeah. <laughs> nothing else is going to be one of the most visually, like, stylistically striking anime of yeah. the season. Like, no doubt. Uh, this is a... Uh, if everything goes well with this series, it will be a natural competitor for anime of the season. Yeah. Uh, it looks... Like, just the trailer it's so alone... interesting. I have watched the trailer, like... A hundred yeah. million times. It is. I remember watching the the anim, uh, animator expo yeah. quite a few times. It's so too. compelling. It seems really Has cool. Has Sayo Yamamoto done a TV show before? Yeah, she did the woman called Fujiko Mini, and she also was that did. On TV? Uh, I believe so. It was a thirteen episode thing. Hmm. Well, she also did Michiko and Hachin, which was definitely That's on right. TV. She did so, do that. All right. Yeah, those are her two main things. Her She's stuff directed is always episodes. Worth watching, oh yeah, so. like her Space Dandy episode was really good. Mm-hmm. Her animator expo shorts really good. She's done one other thing recently, too, that I'm trying to remember. Fuck. I don't know. Her, anyway, her not worth always, talking about here. Yeah, her, her shit's always worth watching. This, so. to me, seems to definitely be the show that she was destined to create and also yeah, I'm sure she's on. a giant figure skating fan. I'm sure, uh, because it, you can definitely see it in the PV. Uh, very, I mean, the fact that they have a figure skating choreographer on staff is a huge deal. Um, I'm, lovely, I'm loving seeing all these like more specialized staff members in the <laughs> credits. Nor, normally, you just have somebody that's listed under like reference or something like that. Yeah. But it's good to have dedicated people. I'm really, I'm, 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 I'm almost at the same level as the Pat Labor <laughs> to like right wanting there. to see this. Right there. Um, <laughs> another quick story. We were talking about this earlier when we were eating dinner. Kirin and Trigger join forces for Frosty Beverage Justice is the title of this article. 
uh, I love Crunchyroll because the way that they write, you can tell that they are just as big of fanboys oh, yeah. about Trigger as is, we is are. Is that a Scott Green article? Uh, it's Paul Chapman. Oh, uh, he fa- is also fan favorite guy. animation studio Trigger has teamed up with the Japanese brewer Kirin Company Limited for an animated commercial advertising Kirin's, Kirin's Hyoketsu line of fruit flavored alcoholic beverages. Which, by the way, this commercial convinced me. Next time we're in Japan, we're gonna get some fucking Hyoketsu because this yeah. like, Hyoketsu just dope. means like super ice cold. It's just fucking fruit. It's like Rita's, basically. Yeah, like Japanese Rita's, but made by Kieran. They're the kings of weird fucking alcohol. Um, characters from Space Patrol Lulico make an appearance, and by they make an oh, appearance, I mean characters from the commercial sit down and watch an episode of Lulico. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I need and to they're watch like that. drinking it, and they're just like, ah, and that's it. It's just I need to, I need to import some of this stuff it, and I do that I can tell myself. you this, uh, it ain't. It ain't an animation masterpiece. It's pretty Good. fucking bad and Good. pretty dumb. Do you have uh, uh, Do you have the article oh, in there fine. about Trigger at the Shibuya Parko? No. What? No. All right. Um, so Shibuya Parko, for those of you who don't know, is a giant shopping uh, complex in, in Shibuya. It's, it's almost like a mini Harajuku. Oh, sorry. Fucking KZ did music for this commercial, too. Of course too. he fucking did. <laughs> My God! It's, uh, uh, Anna Anna Yano is uh, vocals, and KZ did the uh, production. Uh, I need I need to see that. <laughs> so commercial. fucking stupid. So uh, Shibuya Parko is a giant uh, like shopping mall slash complex. They do a lot of really cool stuff. Like that's where I went uh, when we were in Japan to see the uh, the Momoklo, uh like uh, museum, the pop up museum. But they recently uh, got rid of a uh, a store on the bottom floor and had a white wall and invited Trigger to draw all over the wall so pretty oh, much oh shit I remember everybody, this yeah, yeah. they're closing the parko aren't they no the parko is staying open oh, they, they no, were just the, refreshing the something on okay, the floor yeah, yeah. Okay. but uh so basically everybody who works at Trigger just had a giant white canvas wall to doodle on before oh, they get rid so of it dope. so see if you can uh, see if you can find pictures of that online it's pretty easy it's to really find cool. it was on Trigger's cool. uh, Trigger Parko Trigger's Facebook That's page P-A-R-C-O Trigger's Twitter had them um, another brief mention, uh, I thought, this isn't necessarily a, I mean, it's anime for sure, but it's not anything Japanese. Uh, a, the Sailor Moon fan project that was responsible for bringing together over 300 animators to, uh, basically do, like, you know how they do those things where they give everyone, like, five seconds of Star Wars and then they, like, just See fill the John it in? John one. Yeah, uh... They did that with Sailor Moon, but, like, fully animated, and they did it again, this time with episode 68... Uh, season 2 episode 68 of the original series pr- pr- Protect Chibi Usa Clash of the Ten Warriors Oh of course uh, And they literally just gave everyone a cut And told them to reanimate it as they saw, saw fit Over 300 animators I've been meaning to. It's pretty dope Like yeah. it's it's pretty cool It's pretty stylized It's definitely not watchable But it's <laughs> I mean not in the sense that it looks bad But it's just jarring having like every second oh, yeah. You know someone cuts in But I thought It's a cool, cool way to, to find like new animators It's a new cool people Yeah because some of the cuts look ridiculous ridiculously good um but yeah i mean it's it's definitely worth checking out because it's just a really cool interesting project that also yeah like frames indie animators and also like you don't see a whole lot of like u.s based no. animation projects like that uh so it's good to see and i'm, I'm glad i saw it um let's talk about M- lady layton Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, talk yeah. about Lady Layton because I, like, I really, really, I'm really happy that this is happening. Yeah, she looks so cool. So, um, is that the actual during Lady the Layton? Level Five Vision 2016 event uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, they announced Lady Layton, which is a successor game to uh, Professor Layton that features Professor Layton's daughter. She looks so cool. Um, The full title is Lady Layton, The Conspiracy of King Millionaire Ariadne. And it stars none other than uh, than Professor Layton's daughter, Catriel Layton. What a Um, fucking name. I know. Uh, She also happens to be in the puzzle-solving detective life and initially got into this line of work to find out where her father disappeared to. Sounds like a fucking... Detective Conan episode. It does, it does. Uh, when progress isn't going so hot on that mystery, she takes an odd detective work around town with her assistant, Sharo, who is a talking dog. Who's, I, who's the other girl in it, though? I like uh, her. The one that's always, like, biting her thumb in the screen caps. There's well, another character. the voice talents are Kasumi Arimura, Marnie and When Marnie Was There, Koji Yakusho, Shohei Sugiyama in the original Shall We Dance, uh, Kuma, Kuma Tetsu in, in The Boy and the Beast. Uh, and Mesa Kuroki. Uh, wow, that's weird. Fujiko in the live action 2014 Lupin the Third sure. are among the voice talent in Lady Layton. 
Uh, and the first trailer is out. It's coming yeah. uh, spring 2017 in Japan. No word on when we are going to be sure getting it, happen. but I'm sure it'll be soon after that. Um, that's really cute. I'm really happy that yeah, that's man, happening. That's a really great cool way too. to like continue that. I always love the art it. style. And yeah, that's a really, yeah. really nice refresh. Uh, PA Works actually did yes. all the animation for those games, and it's uh, it works it looks so really many, good. Like, small things like that. In fact, they have... Um, they have a like children's almost like Veggie Tales type thing yeah. uh, that they did that I never heard about, but it's actually on Daisuke Premium right now. So free yeah. trial. Um, here's some more exciting news. Thirty uh, third issue of Kodansha's Eton magazine announced on Friday a while ago, uh, the August fifth, uh, that uh, show again Roku Rakugo Shinju, the mm-hmm. second television anime season based on Haruko Kumota's Shogun Rakugo Shinju manga, will be premiering in January. Um, I can wait for that. Yeah. Uh, in addition, the manga's 10th and final volume will feature a brand new 20-page story about the time when Konatsu and Yakumo were young and living together. A limited edition with the volume will include a pamphlet with the new story and character designs by Kumoto for the second season, so that will be coming soon. Uh, September 7th. Um, cool. That's it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It's going to be on Crunchyroll again. If you want to hear right. us talk about yeah, that. Yeah, go check out the Any uh, of our episodes spring. when that was airing, because yeah, we talked about it all. Go check lot. out. Was that last season or two seasons ago? I think that was last season. Yeah. God, it was all it? runs together at some point. I don't know, it? actually. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about your favorite show, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. Um, <laughs> Do we have to? Uh, is this article from today? It is from today, okay, yes. Okay, because there, there's actually quite a bit of news that we haven't talked about for that. Uh, is that is the, there? the one with the train? Uh, no. The human train. Yes, yes. Okay. So, God damn it, Biba. Yeah, so over the last month, Wit Studio uh, have been tweeting bonus art for the series. Uh, it's basically the cast being led by Ayame in the roped off manner of young students on an outing or field trip. Uh,. Everyone that has died in the series so far has a halo over their head. The one person whose halo is conspicuously absent is, of course, Biba. Probably the worst character in yeah, the show. Yeah, the character that ruined the show. Yeah. Uh, at least uh, ruined the, the good the good of the yeah. show. <laughs> uh, turned the show from cool into dumb zombie into Mega what Man. are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Um, they also... Previewed a bunch of shit, including a very inappropriate Dakimakura. No, it and, is comic uh, at times. So. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, but uh, I like that promotional artwork a lot. Uh, honestly, really their um, Witch Studios Twitter account just posts some of the coolest stuff. They do. Uh, they They're do a, a lot of follow. key. Yeah, they do a lot of key artwork. They do a lot of uh, like. Uh, fun like fan art from their own creators. They're uh, yeah. They're definitely a, one of the really cool anime Twitter accounts to follow. I also like the to art's point really out good. That we've got our boy here. Fucking goddamn it! It's, it's not to gonna get in. bigger, Mark. No, here we go. Who's no, <laughs> God damn just it. can't win. Hate this. It's the American guy, the w- Wakari Masen. Oh yeah, the Max guy. Powers, yeah, whatever Max his name is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So Biba's not dead. They should just rename him to Max Powers. Yeah, he, his character in the show should be Max Powers. Uh, Biba's not dead. Um, That's really is it bad exciting. that I've already forgotten how that show ended? Uh, I kind of like really. repressed those memories. Yeah. How did it end? Did he die? He was like left in a puddle, and we thought that uh, the main character died. I already forgot his name. Mume killed him, didn't she? Yeah. Okay. To like save. Yeah, because what's his name was down. Yeah, and then Ayame came back. And then and, Mume. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you, uh-huh. got it, you got it. Piecing it back okay, together. Okay. Yeah. They fought like in that field. Uh huh. And what's his name was Ikoma was down. Ikoma. And there then we go. Mume came out of the weird butterfly. F- yeah. Ikoma, yeah. And she killed. Out of the weird princess Mononoke Eva monster. With. Did you kill him with his own, like, cool gun sword thing that he had? I think so. Okay. He got, he got shot or something. He's probably a fucking... He, he was a left he was, dead. He's probably a Cabanary, and we just didn't know it. He's probably a Cabanary. I don't like that. He's pro- Also, uh, if you ever want to feel physically sick, read the lyrics to the theme song of that show, because it is... They're I'm good. bad. They're bad. I'm good. They're real bad. I'm happy with... Knowing only the Kotetsujo no Kabaneri part of the lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, that's the best anyway, part of the song. So. I don't want to talk about this anymore. This is just bringing up all these feelings that I don't want to feel. We should just watch the first three episodes of that show and nothing else. Yeah, like a couple times. Yeah. Just like have those, like array, like just VHS. Before it went off over the those rails. Memories. 
Um, we've talked about this on the show before, but Yamushi mm. Pedal Spare Bike is a thing that's happening. It what is a bad a, name. I'm sorry. I love that name. It's a really it's dumb name. It's just as dumb as everything else in spare that show. Spare Bike would make sense if it was a spinoff. Yeah. And it, it, that's not a spinoff. It's not a spinoff. It's a prequel. It's the starting days of Yamushi Pedal. They should they um, should name it Spare Bike if it was about, like, Hiroshima. It's... Yeah. The, the, the school, not the... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just school. cycling through... <laughs> No, no, <laughs> Grave stop. of the Fireflies, stop. die dead. Stop. <laughs> no, the skull, oh, the okay. big nasty okay. snake with the green jerseys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the snake. Oh, God. I yeah, forgot you forgot about the snake. snake. Oh, no, I the snake. The snake. Um, he appears in the movie again. And it's, Good. He's just as awful. Um, there is a really great scene in the movie, though, where... So, Sohoku takes a plane to where they're going. Of course. Everyone else takes a train. And so it starts with Hakone, and it goes through fucking Hiroshima, then it goes to fucking Kyoto They're Fushimi. all on the same fucking Literally, train. they all just keep getting on the train. Like, all the opposing teams yeah. are just all getting on the same train, all going south. It's so fucking funny, because they're all just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Every station they get to. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but... Spare Bike is an OVA that is happening uh, later this year. It is going to be... Yeah, September is going to be receiving a two-week theatrical release. Um, Yeah, it's just an OVA. Uh, It is a prequel to the original series that features, like, kind of the origin stories of the uh, third years in the current series. So, uh, mostly um, Makashima. uh, Toto is one of the main characters. Mm -hmm. Todokuro and Kinjo, uh, and then Arkita and they're somewhere, <laughs> yeah. even though he's not a cyclist yet. Um, and uh, there's a trailer for it. It's up uh, everywhere, but mostly on Crunchyroll. Yeah. Uh, I would go watch it if you're a fan of Yopeta because um, it's pretty fan service. It doesn't, yeah, but it doesn't look like uh, boring as fuck like no. uh, most other sports anime prequel things. It looks pretty. It actually, good. looks I'm really excited. kind of insightful and also just it just looks good. Like, which is, I mean, Yopeta has never looked bad, but it's never been like, ooh, that's pretty. But like, I'm looking at this now, and I'm like, ooh, this a yeah, lot of a lot of colors good. happening here. Yeah, everybody so. has like a, like a Super Saiyan aura around them. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Sports anime in all caps. Um, before I forget, because you said theatrical release, and that reminded me, and something tells me you don't have this news. Probably um, not. Digimon Adventure Try. Nope. It's uh, it's U.S. theatrical release. Yes, you heard correctly. Has been announced for part one. It is being run by Fathom Events. It's got something like four hundred uh, four hundred theaters. In fact, one of them is about two blocks that way. So I will be buying my ticket for that later this week. Yeah. I think that's in September. Uh, sure. They I, I haven't listened to it yet, but apparently, just like they redid Butterfly, the Japanese opening, they like did a new version of it for uh, for the Japanese release of Trying the Theaters. Apparently, they redid the U.S. Digimon opening for this. So, yeah. Nice. I'm I'm excited for that. Um, speaking of things that are coming to U.S. theaters, Hideaki Anno's Godzilla Resurgence Ooh. is being brought to is U.S. theaters by Funimation in uh, December. Makes me I nervous. Believe. Uh, Funimation announced during their 2016 San Diego Comic Con panel that they will be distributing the next Toho Godzilla movie. Uh, and while they didn't give an exact release date, Godzilla Resurgence will make it to theaters in late 2016. I think that has actually been narrowed. This is actually not a recent article. I think that's December of 2016. Okay. That uh, just makes me nervous, not because I think Funimation is going to fuck up the, the technical parts of the release, but subs. they have a bad habit of not releasing stuff in Tampa. Like, either we have to drive two sure. hours to Orlando or four hours to Miami. However, is this uh, going to be a wide, wide release? I have a feeling that this is going to be They're a wide release Ball considering it. how it's fucking Godzilla. Yeah, like, but they've everyone, done dumb shit before. That's true, but still, this is Godzilla. like one of the, in terms of just sheer name recognition, this is probably yeah. one of the biggest releases they've ever had. Evidently, the Other movie itself Ball is Z. very, very good. Yeah. I've heard only good things about it. I have read uh, several reviews of it, and all of them have been glowing. Uh, And all of them uh, kind of saying the same things that a lot of them did about Gareth Edwards' uh, Godzilla movie. It's it's very similar in the sense that Mm -hmm. Godzilla doesn't actually play a huge part in in Godzilla. But but that's also fucking Anno. Of course he doesn't. Like, uh, Anno... 
literally built his name on subverting the norm, and of course he's going to do this, but also... It's really uh, all the press that he's been doing has really been painting him in a much different light. And I feel knowing, like this is what he wants. Knowing to what do. I know about Anno, and admittedly, most of this is from Blue Blazes, the TV show. <laughs> it seems like this is really what he wanted to do. He yeah. kind of fell into anime because yeah. he, he worked it's on Nausicaa easier. and all that. But like he he grew up really liking Ultraman and all yeah. that stuff. So I think this this like live action, obviously not Toku, although I'm sure he'd love to do Toku. There are a lot of his stylistic cues, even in the trailers. I mean, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, it looks. You can see, it you looks can tell beautiful, it's and the you direction is is very um, cinematic, not in a way that like you know. I'm, I am all for non Evangelion Anno. Yeah. If you put those two I things together, I think non Evangelion like, Anno is the off. best Anno at this yeah, point absolutely. because that, and uh, again, that's why I'm advocating him to just fucking give over the last Eva movie to like, Sunamaki and Ava, just have yeah. them do it because I think he, he doesn't wants need to do that he doesn't point. need to do it anymore. I don't think anyone would be mad at him if they were just like I'd be oh, happy with him. Yeah, I would be like, dude, you need to free yourself up. Like this shit is like hanging over your head. It's like freaking George R. R. Martin, but like. <laughs> even worse probably <laughs> like you can't it's, die to get out of it yeah like you you need to just give it up give it to someone who has the enthusiasm to make it like Suramaki and is making stuff that kind of resembles that era of like what people want uh and just like i mean the script has to be done at this point just fucking I'm, give I'm it sure. to Suramaki yeah, they- and let him and the team do it. Just let it end, damn you, it. I mean, you already only did, like, a third of the last Ava movie, like, and that's fine. Like, you don't even need to do that much, man. Like, just get it over with. So, yeah, uh, Godzilla, December. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, another thing that was announced uh, was uh, Bubuki Baranki Season 2. They showed a bunch of new key visuals for that. Uh, they revealed, uh, what's his name, Sister. Yeah, I'm um, kind of sad that they did that, but now that I've seen the trailer, she's fucking badass. Yeah. I'm ready. Uh, the trailer is out. The trailer looks really fucking good. Yeah, I'm like, uh, what is this? Some... I'm excited for Bubuki Buraki? Yeah, Damn, there's what? some snippets of Megalara, the U.S. Yes. Buraki, in there. I'm pretty excited about that. There's a lot of shit that I don't understand <laughs> about it. Um, she she seems like, like a bitch. Yeah, and they have... She has her own team with their own... Baranki that is just a black version yeah, of Obu. Yeah, it's a black version of Obu. Which yeah. is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it looks pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. Her, her character design... Her designs, character design reminds me a lot of Black Rock Shooter. Yeah, her honest. character design looks... Her character design reminds me a lot of Black Rock Shooter, and it's also a little guy in Axie. It's got a little girl in love you know, in it. Now that I'm looking at it again, it reminds me more than anything of Ellen and Tara. I'm pretty sure that's like a level 40 Ellen outfit. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> it's just... It looks... Uh, it looks, I mean, it looks perfect for, for the show. The thing and is, I see that, and I go, man, I want a figurine of that character, which means yeah. it's, it's... I want a figurine design. of a lot of characters. Oh, there we go. Show. Perfect. Tell me... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you see it, don't you? Oh, perfect. Let's, yeah. let's show the camera. <laughs> that, that's that's a terrible idea. There you go. Perfect. You, you can see you it. You guys see that, it's right? right there. Just, just switch Jesus. out the thong for some hot pants. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm excited to <laughs> see her. Bad. I was kind of bummed that they reve- revealed her in the way that they did, and then I remembered how Marvel has literally announced anything over yeah, the past 40 years. that is very true. And uh, something that, right. a practice that I have defended. I do think that normally it is more interesting to see how something happens than that it happens. I think, so. I think it got me excited for the show once again, you yeah. know, two months ahead of time. So. Yeah. Um, one last article here, and this is a great one to go out on. They announced more characters for Classic Lloyd. Classic Lloyd is the really, 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 really dumb uh, Sunrise show. I'm so excited. Uh, about uh, classical composers living in the modern era. Um, the three composers that they announced, including the casting, uh, Titan Kusunoki will be playing Bach. Bach. That's oh, what Bach I've looks seen like. It. Okay, you've yeah. seen them. Okay. Uh, Aya Endo is playing Tchaikovsky, who is, is also, also a woman. Gender- I wonder. I wonder what the producer's reason for gender bending. Because I believe on an earlier. I episode, know why, and it's just that so they don't have all men. That's- oh no, I know that. But given the the reason that uh, who is the other, was it? Who's the other gender bent composer? Um, List. Was it Strap? Yeah, it was List, and that was yeah. because List. Uh, I, I explained it in an earlier episode. Yeah, yeah, we, we've we've been on record. Yeah. And then they're also including, which is really strange, they're including a yeah. uh, Polish uh, composer by the name of Barzuska. Uh, I need to look up yeah, the Yeah, I, I wasn't aware of 
that person existing. And I she is one of the she is the only female composer from yeah. this era. It's all uh, Victorian era mm-hmm. composers. Uh, Tekla Barzuska Baranowska. She is a Polish. That is a hell of a uh, name. Yeah, she was a Polish composer. Um, the early to mid Victorian era. Um, the crater on Venus is named after her. Uh, she's right. most famous for um, a piece called uh, A Maiden's Prayer. Um, it was published in 1856 in Warsaw uh, as a supplement to the Revue et Gazette Musicale de Paris uh, in 1859. It's a short piano piece. I honestly have no idea why she's on here. I think it's probably just so they could have someone gender who's parody. not gender bent and also yeah. a woman. Um, so she should be re- interesting, but that show looks fucking idiotic I, I in can't the best wait. way. I'm so Tofu excited. Beats is doing the fucking Tofu theme song, Beats. and it's just a like, it's just a like basically like a Tofu Beats style classical medley. It's really, it looks really silly. Bach looks like a goddamn, he looks like a space dandy character. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He's, You're not wrong. Like no, like seriously, he, he looks like a damn, he looks like a damn space dandy character. <laughs> Um. Anyway, uh, anything else uh, talk wise before we, can, we go? We can talk about some things. Uh, one thing that I want to know is our next uh, news episode is probably going to be a lot more anime heavy, just because Comic Cat is coming up at the end of this month. True. And uh, being summer Comic Cat, we're going to hear a lot more, of, or we're going to see pretty much the final versions of, uh, of the trailers for most of the October anime. Yeah. It's a and big there's one. a lot of them. Yeah, and we're going to uh, hear a lot it's of uh, be winter, a, big a lot of January anime will be announced. Um, yeah. Another thing that we didn't talk about at all in terms of we October anime is. We didn't talk about is, a lot of stuff well, yeah. there's a lot of news. But there's, um, it's looking pretty magical girl heavy. So I'm excited for that. Uh, a me fall being of new. magical girls in sports anime. I'm, I'm into that. Yeah, nah. Some of them are more classic magical girl than others. Uh, we we have a couple regular magical girl ones, but there is one that's a magical girl set in World War II that rides a anti tank rifle. Yeah, like a broom. Mm-hmm. There's that. Uh, there's a magical girl raising project, which uh, everybody thought was just this like cutesy phone game, and now it looks like they're going to be dying a la Madoka. So okay. there we're gonna we'll see what happens and there. There's of course Flip Flappers, which is going to be the uh, best name ever. <laughs> Flip Flappers is going to be the uh, the Sakuga show of the season. It's going to be uh, next season's uh, Mob Psycho, really, given everybody that's tapped cool. on it. Um, I'm trying to count in my head how many sports anime are premiering next season, and Whoa. I'm trying to think. You got Haikyuu season three. Oh all god, out. I forgot about that. Yeah, all out, Long Riders, oh. Yuri on Ice. Japan just hit fourth in uh, in the rugby. They there, is got, there is another sports. third season thing happening next next season. I'm trying to think. Days is continuing, I think, isn't it? It's a 26 yeah, episode I think so, series. Yeah. Um, unless it's Split Core, which I really hope it's not. Mm. Um, Here's a piece of news we didn't mention. There is a Code Geass countdown for an anniversary. Yeah, this is the 10th anniversary this yes. year. So, God, uh, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Holy I really, uh, you, it's flown by because they don't never stop making Code yeah. Geass, uh, which honestly, is weird. Because I don't know very many people have seen anything past the original series. I've seen, I've seen uh, all of uh, Akito's stuff, and it's honestly yeah. pretty good. I mean, not as good as the original, and I don't think it ever released here. Yeah. Akito the Exile. I mean, we were in it. Japan, and shit was still Ooh, releasing yeah. while we were there, so it's still I think still the, the final Akito movie came out I just, we were there. what are they going to do for the 10th anniversary? Uh, if it's something big. I hope I it's a look. Blu-ray box. I would definitely buy a Blu-ray box. Like a proper remaster of that show. How much of a chance do you think that it's, it's like a new thing? I, yeah, there's a very the good chance considering Akido, Akido the Exile just finished like this year, so mm-hmm. there's there's a decent chance of that. But who really animates that it. now? I don't know. <laughs> who animated the original Code Geass? Uh, that was Sunrise. Okay, it's probably Sunrise considering they have 14 studios. That's true. They do have a lot of those. I, I'm pretty sure one of them is known internally as the Geass Studio. So, <laughs> um. um I'm trying to think. I'm. Sh- I think there was something else I wanted to talk about. Yeah, there, I, I know remember. there's a ton of stuff I missed just yeah. because I don't have my notes. Yeah, there's not. I mean, but we also haven't. Li- literally, have not talked about news in like almost a month. So yeah. we cover the big stuff. I'm <sighs> for one. Am actually very excited to see a Japanese Godzilla movie in a theater. That yeah, is going to be a really interesting a experience, feeling. especially one made by fucking Anna oh, okay. with a 
Shiro Sagisu soundtrack, and that's so weird. It's gonna be really cool. I'm super excited. I wish they could just, just like reuse uh, Rebuild 2.0 soundtrack for Godzilla because I'm thinking some of those songs would make yeah. fucking. Well, the other great thing Godzilla is I've songs. seen a lot of people compare it to, you know, it, it is like, you know, a lot. I've seen a lot of people be like, I really hate to make this comparison, but it really is like an Evangelion take on Godzilla in a okay direct from a directorial yeah. standpoint. Um, it's very focused on the people. I don't think very many people could argue that Evangelion was bad directed. Some people might hate the writing, but from a direction standpoint... Some people? You mean you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I really... Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I don't think... Eva, Eva is, it, it's good. It's Most just people that I know that favorite. are modern era Eva fans don't have anything bad to say about it until the third one. Uh, there are plenty of original series fans that got super butthurt about all the fan service in the second one. That's definitely um, not my problem with it. I think it is. I happen to think it is the best Evangelion thing. Period. No, oh, I love the um, the definitely one has was, the best soundtrack. In terms of just a pure production, I think it's like it's in my top five favorite anime films of all time. But also, it's like it's the best day of a thing. I love how well it contrasts with the first one too because yeah. there's like zero action in the first one and the second one is just fighting. The really. best thing that you could say about the Rebuild movies is that they're all very different from one another. Yeah. And they all completely fuck you up after <laughs> watching ways, the previous yeah. one into the next one. So what, f- like four could just turn into a magical girl show and I literally would That's not That's how you get surprised. somebody like me to enjoy <laughs> Evangelion again. <laughs> but the, the Evas are mad- magical girls. Even that. At the expense of user sanity. Mecha Maho Shoujo. <laughs> it's going to be like Madoka in the sense that a transformation sequence is going to cause Shinji to go insane. That, that's what happened again, is writing Rebuild yeah, 4. That's what the. That's like, what the plus one is. That's what the like autopilot system is. So, just a bunch of Kira Kira and then. Th- 3.0 is Tsurumaki and Ano, and then the 3.0 plus one, the one is Gen. Oh god. <laughs> that would be like. The worst thing ever? I mean, it would be. It would be it would be great in the sense that it would finally be co- coherent and easy to understand uh, and would not be full of techno babble for once. But at the same time, I don't even think Gen can say it at this point. This is a train <laughs> that has been... Gen can this is it. a train that is off the rails, off the bridge, plunging down into the canyon, and the last thing that needs to happen is just hit the floor and everyone dies. That's the... <laughs> That's, that's, that's an my end best everybody analogy. Can be happy with. That's, that's the only thing I can compare it to. Just it's, name it the seventh impact, and that's the end. Skipped a couple. I just, you know, as I mentioned before, all this press where Anno has been speaking very frankly about his work on Evangelion and how much it has depressed him <laughs> to a near suicidal state, uh, I uh, I really heavily regret all the shit that I have talked about him regarding I uh, Evangelion. Don't. I feel really bad for the bad for the guy. I feel like he legit has been doing his best and just does not know how to deal with this horrible, horrible. That's not what I have the problem with. Created. I have the problem how he talks about other anime. That's what upsets me about the guy. Yeah, but also he didn't I, need to do all that. I tend to not ever be surprised at what legendary anime creators have to say <laughs> because one of my heroes is Mamoru Oshii and yeah, he's a piece he of does shit it, he does and doesn't too. know what he's talking about when it comes to other anime and is still a genius. And I. I pride myself. You still need in the to fact watch Beautiful that, Dreamers. Yes, I, I pride myself in the fact that this is the one instance in my life where I have successfully managed to separate the artist from the art. <laughs> and, but still, I feel bad for the guy. I feel like he has clearly created a thing that he a wants nothing to do with anymore, and b um, feels as if it is creatively stifling him. And it's quite obvious considering how much of a uh, thematic clusterfuck the third movie is. Would you say that he got sauce on his own bathroom? He did. He sauce robed himself. <laughs> but not... He did not willingly <laughs> put sauce on his own bathrobe. He was eating a the delicious from pulled the pork sandwich and accidentally got some on there and then put it in the ra- wash and his just, sauce just got all, all over, over the all robe. his other clothes. And now he's got sauce on everything, and he doesn't know what the fuck to do, so he might as well just kill himself. I hate how well that worked. Yeah, but now he's going to the store, and he's buying a he's Godzilla buying costume, oh, oh. and now he's going to just wear that. Let us pray. He's he buying, does not he, get Here are the two things he's buying. Godzilla. He's buying an Ultraman outfit for himself in the bedroom, and he's buying a Godzilla outfit, and he's going to wear the Godzilla out in public and be like, hey, look, it's me, Happy Anno. 
You guys have never seen me before. The Ultraman <laughs> news just, uh, or the Ultraman mention right there, just remind me of another very, very important piece of news. Mm. Uh, if you used to play Final Fantasy XIV and you haven't, go ahead and resub for the event that ends in two weeks because you can get Super Sentai poses. Oh my! Not God. only that, there's. F- there's five different ones, so That's you can get great. a group together and do like the Ginyu pose. Oh my god! I forget. God. Um, they're they're based on one of the actual Common Rider series. I forget which one, That's but good. they do like the whole. Do thing. they have the? Oh yeah! I don't know. They, they got they there got it is. one going like that, one oh going the other god. way. They got somebody doing something dumb in the middle, and you got two on the knees up front. It's real good. Fucking go away, Tokusatsu! <laughs> get out of my life. Uh, After we stop. lost anime, seen it because we didn't oh know fucking god. Tokusatsu questions. Biggest bullshit I've ever experienced in so, my life. I was so glad that uh, that somebody else came to bail us out of the car, Sitch. Oh my God. So real quick, uh, story time from the end of uh, from the end of AFO. Yeah. Is uh, the last day of Sunday? We were gonna we were gonna do we were gonna go watch an anime scene it to have some fun, and then there was nobody there, so I was like, all right, we'll compete. We keep it uh, neck and neck for a while, and then ultimately wind up losing to. Um, what we would say are bad questions. So what the winners would say were completely legit. But it was a bunch of, like, tokusatsu questions, stuff like that. Yeah. And that, that's not really our jam. And they didn't know them either. That was the oh, funny no, part. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, that was... One of them guessed, and then they gave it to him, even though it was a... They guessed, like, six total times, Total gimme. We're but still a little salty. It was, yeah, I was... It was payback for me. <laughs> You're not supposed to hit the buzzer until they put their arm up. And is, they were like, what is this song from? And the opening to Trigon oh, yeah. started playing, and I might as well just have fucking destroyed the <laughs> controller, hitting the button. I smashed that motherfucking like button. Because <laughs> I, like, I literally, as soon as I heard the opening guitar riff, I was just like, like, fucking going for it. And she and I yelled it out. And she, I was like, Trigon! And she didn't, she was just like, I didn't raise my arm. And then she was like, oh, I guess I'm going to give it to her. Wow. <laughs> like, everyone but, in the room knew what I was, yeah. knew what it was. Yeah, but like. Yeah. But uh, so that happened. I was I was kind of a dick about it. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize this was Tokusatsu yeah. seen it. Like not a single person oh, that credits themselves too. as a weeaboo has ever had a reasonable expectation of ever having seen any Tokusatsu series. Yeah. I have tried. Trust me. I've seen Tokusatsu a few fans, episodes. I'm sorry. Like ninety nine percent of Tokusatsu fucking. Sucks. I got I got into the pirate themed Common Rider one, <laughs> or no, not not Common Rider. Uh, super, it was Sentai something, but I only it's got into that super because that Sentai was Sentai Geiger that was, Hurricane. This, this is a good reason. Like, I got I got into it because that was back in the day when somebody from GG the fan sub group would stream Japanese TV on Friday nights, which is Saturday yeah. morning in Japan, and Tokusatsu airs right before Precure. Ah, so you had uh, to, you were forcing yourself. Oh no no no! I, I once I, I caught the end of an episode one week. I was like, I should I should watch the Toku. So I started watching that live. That was not, that was fun. But to great. go back to the beginning of this terrible yeah. story, so uh, Mark's car wouldn't start, and I post oh, I post yeah. in the uh, in the AFO like uh, like panel group thing <laughs> if anybody had uh, had this. jumper cables, and of course <laughs> the first person to answer is one of the lovely ladies who ran the anime yeah. scene at Panama. I don't have anything against them. I think the only thing that they sh- probably should know is that if you're running a panel called Anime Scene It, the they last thing that questions. you should ever, ever, ever assume is that anyone in the room knows about Tokusatsu. It was and a I, crazy question, too. I, it was how many toku or how many superhero series has Toei made? Yeah, and the answer and was I'm, like 120-something. Yeah, I'm also willing to give them the benefit of the doubt because AFO is literally the only convention I've Tokugan. ever been to, especially in Florida, that has like a... I wouldn't say thriving tokusatsu they, scene. They have a, a panel room but it's called good. the Toku Track. Yeah, it's good. So, and they had like yeah. a tokusatsu guest this year in Mark Musashi who's done work on like, you know, the like the Common Rider series that was based in California mm-hmm. and there was he's done like, you know, he did that Cutie Honey TV show. I mean, he's been in some shit. He's a stunt man and he's a cool dude, but like anime and tokusatsu, there's very little crossover there. And uh and the other thing, the, the the most egregious thing to me is that, I mean, we're talking about last five questions here. This is yeah. supposed to be the most difficult question. All the questions up until then are anime, and then you get to like yeah. the third to last question. It's a question about Common Rider's belt, and they're like, "What is this?" And we're like, "What the yeah. fuck? Mm-hmm. This is an anime." <laughs> like, it was super confusing. Yeah, because anime it, Tokusatsu is not anime even no. by the biggest except stretch for the, of the one that Gen wrote. 
That's yeah, an honor. Well, and there's the Cutie Honey movie that yeah. basically is a live action anime. So there's a little bit of overlap, but not enough to put it in something. There is anime there scene. in the U.S. There is zero overlap, and even in Japan, there's almost zero overlap. So it's like, you know, just because you watch Kamen Rider doesn't mean that you lo- watch you know Act of Raid or whatever. I don't oh, know. God. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, fucking Samurai Flamenco or. Right, Sam on, Flam was great. Got you on crowds. That's getting a Blu-ray box in the U.S. The Iron Samurai Man Flamenco anime. is. There's some news for you. Samurai There's, Flamenco Blu-ray box. Of, I've seen people talking about it. Oh, the people who watched it love it. Or the people yeah. who watched it all the way through. I actually dropped it around episode eight, and then somebody on one of my IRC channels was like, no, you need to watch this. And then I marathoned it, and it was it the greatest like fucking thing I've ever seen. Yeah. That's definitely a marathon show. I'm the last person to enjoy marathoning an anime. I prefer yeah. the weekly format. But that is that is one that you need to marathon. The weekly format is pretty great. I like it. I don't like I don't like marathoning anything, let alone. Well, I, I like know. I like marathoning I got through the first stuff, season of I Mr. Can, Robot pretty quick. Yeah, well, that's great because like I can marathon stuff that's in English because Do I can just have else. it on in the background. Yeah, but I'm uh, surprisingly not at the level yet where I'm fluent enough in Japanese to like just watch without subs or without looking at the screen. But that's pretty fun to do. There's only room for one of us in this town. Anyway. You know what we should do for 100? Mm-hmm. Make a zone review. Great. It'd be our first review video. Yeah. Well, for, for an anime. Yeah. Man. We should, we're, yeah, we're we should, we should just start reviewing old Weird ass shit. shit. Yeah. I need to can talk do, to... Hey, can we do drunk reviews? <laughs> that would be fun. Can we do drunk anime history? Oh. And then just <laughs> have a bunch of... Oh no! We probably should be workshopping this off the air. Oh no, no, this is great. Uh, drunk I like anime, drunk history. anime history. I don't know how even how we would do that. The same way we did our drunk episode at ShadowCon. Oh god! Just yeah. give us a topic, hit the record button, and just be assholes we'll just about fucking it. Fucking poorly read through the Wikipedia article. Oh, that would be so much fun. I'd have to get drunk enough to not be able to read well, which is pretty fucking drunk. We can get you though. I guess I could do. You can that. get some of that trigger drink. Trigger drink, yeah. Ooh. Um, Trigger Cola, drink that. Yeah, we well, should probably wrap Yeah, up. we should probably stop. We're at <laughs> hour twenty. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, the last twenty minutes was complete bullshit. Yeah. Uh, so that's gonna do it for us this week. Smash that motherfucking like button. <laughs> um, <laughs> I heard that today and I was like reminded that that's a yeah. thing and I'm like, gotta, I gotta say that. That's <laughs> <laughs> gotta work that in uh, somehow. Yeah, smash that motherfucking like button. Smash that motherfucking su- subscribe button, more importantly. I mean, yeah. um, check us out. Uh, if you're listening to this po- in podcast format, uh, you can watch us on YouTube. We are now officially at youtube.com slash Ono Anime. Yes, That's we pretty can dope. Say that. uh, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, uh, Ono Anime.moe. Uh, go there. I have a written review up. Um, yep, for some Guess No Kiwame Otome. Yep. Uh, I'm band. working on a long form uh, Love Live article yeah. that will be up at some point. We are gonna we're gonna be writing more on the website. Yeah. Um, things That's that the idea. either don't really garner or don't really deserve a video, or just things that work better in writing format. Uh, so check the website periodically. I mean, we post everything that we post on there on Facebook, yeah. so or and Twitter as well. So um, go on there, check those out. Um, keep an eye on the website. Keep an eye on the YouTube. Uh, if you're on YouTube and don't know we have a podcast, hey, we have a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's on iTunes and it's on Stitcher. And it's on. <laughs> if Lipson, you do listen to the, uh, if you do listen to it on iTunes or uh, anything like that, go leave us a review. Yeah. So far, we've got three reviews. They're all five stars. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, praising our audio quality. Yeah. Not going to be too happy with this week, but Sorry, that's bud. all right. Fuck you, <laughs> listeners. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just it's a good kidding. thing nobody's no. listening anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, thanks for joining us again. And Join us next time when we actually talk about anime. Yeah, uh, we'll be back soon. Uh, we'll see you later. <laughs>